What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Supper Club and welcome to the first edition or first episode of our vlog, where some of us contributors will be getting together and discussing our opinions and thoughts on some of the latest in the automotive world. I see Edwin's already. What what's going on with you, Edwin? What's happening? Oh, we're hey, we're hey, join the club. Oh, you know, we're, hey, we're in the, hey, hey, I didn't notice that. Which one's yours? Yeah, uh, this is from the Malaysian Grand Prix, 2018. Nice. This is from. Uh, what do you got? 2019. Oh, yeah, I got the, the upgraded model. It's yeah, got all yeah, the yeah. whistles. So, yeah, yours has air conditioning on it. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. I like it. How are you doing? Plug in hybrid. Doing well, man. Trying to uh, keep my sanity during this uh, period of self quarantining. And what about you, man? Keeping your sanity? Yeah, keeping my sanity. You know, tough times, obviously, for everybody. Just trying to keep a, a positive head here. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's. Uh, it, it's tough, but you know we just gotta keep looking forward, and that's all we yeah. can do. That's gonna keep us going. So, yeah, man. Honestly, cars is one of the few things that's keeping my sanity. I've been watching a whole lot of the Car Trek, Car Wizard, Hoovies Garage videos, whatever I can get my hands on. Oh, uh, great I've series! Been watching some old, some old videos, going back, digging deep into the archives. They did an incredible job with the Car yeah. Trek series. Did you get a chance to get caught up? I was watching the last episode. And uh, there were, it was a rating system. Uh, I'll, I'll catch up on it. But, you know, the whole premise of that whole thing is you know, Auto Tempest saying, hey, um, buy a car that's equal, um, equal price as the new C8 Corvette. And speaking of the Corvette, what do you think about it? I'm going to be honest with you, man. I, I was unsure about how I felt about the C8 Corvette when they first announced that they're releasing a mid-engine. Because yeah. I knew that wasn't very Corvette-esque, right? That's... It's not how Corvette does business. And so no. I was like, this some is say even blasphemy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, this is just a futile attempt to compete with their Italian car counterparts. But you know what? I saw it in person at the LA auto show um, back in November. And then I saw it driving on the road on the 55 freeway um, a couple of weeks ago. And I got to say, I'm impressed. Wow. How, how, yeah. How is that? You know, I saw it at the, San Diego New Year's Auto Show. Yeah, I saw a red one. I saw a ZR uh, 51 package in red. Nice. Um, I haven't seen it on the road, so I don't. I'm not quite sold on it. Um, I'm sure if I see it on the road, it might change my mind. But dude, I've not seen one in the wild. Dude, I I gotta say this is probably one of the most uh, proportionate cars that I've. One really? of the most proportionate Corvettes. I didn't like the. I think if you look at the C4, by the way, look at the lines and the body and the way it's stretched. I think it's a very yeah. proportional car. And then the C5, I think Corvette lost it just a little bit with the design and the styling. Oh. Yeah. I got to say, I, Sam, that, that's a hot take because that's my favorite Corvette, the well, C5. One, one of the things that GM did in that era with the C5 was they resorted to a lot of plastic. And in my opinion, they got really lazy with a lot of designs. There wasn't a lot of exciting cars coming out of GM during that era. Um, no. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, man. The C5 is probably my least favorite Corvette, but I'm not here to squabble. <laughs> <laughs> um, the C8 honestly looked incredibly beautiful. Very well proportioned from the front to the back. I think the mid-engine, I think they knocked it out of the park. Chevrolet did an incredible job, and I think they put a lot of time into it. And unlike the previous generation, the interior looks absolutely stunning. I think they actually paid attention to the details and looked at some of their competitors, some of the Italian well, cars. Absolutely. They, they actually listened to the consumer this time. Yeah. Instead of shoving down your throat like, hey, this is the cool midlife crisis car. Right. <laughs> not anymore not anymore so the and which also brings into yes i i like that it doesn't have that hey i'm over 40 popping blue pills and i'm losing my hair i need something to feel young again so let me get a corvette yeah now it's 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 pretty cool and i i'm not a big fan of uh of corvettes i, I gotta be honest but i'm looking at this one a whole lot different and that's thanks to the marketing and, and the great job that the folks over there at GM have done, yeah. um, you know, with all the specs. So if you want to get into the specs for some of the people that don't know. Yeah, no, it's uh, I think just going off the zero to 60 time alone, it's very respectable. Zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. Uh, That's insane. That's supercar. That's supercar territory. Exactly. 
And uh, one of our writers put together a very brilliant review of the C8 that'll be available on the we, uh, the, uh, we oh, are the fantastic. website. Um, it'll be available on the website tomorrow, actually. Um, and actually, if you're watching this, it'll be today. So it'll be on the website. Um, and one of the things that he pointed out was it actually has better zero to 60 time and performance numbers in many categories to the MP4-12C, which I know kind of is a dated McLaren now, and we know where McLaren is today. Um, they've break, broken many records. and Night and day. Yeah, yeah. It, not the printer that it used to be, the MP4-12C. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's but a, anyway, and, great and, uh, <laughs> and the uh, Porsche 911 GT3. Um, so again, since then, those automakers have made uh, much more improved performance numbers on their newer models. However, it is noteworthy to point out that the new C8 puts up numbers that are respectable against some very impressive counterparts, supercars. Very, very, very. Some of the key features that I like are, uh, you know, besides the mid-engine and all that good stuff, um, I love how all the newest tech is in there. Yeah. And, you know, one of my favorite things is it has a GPS system that records where you lift your front nose. So if you push a button, it records and says, whenever I'm GPS located here, yeah. I'm going to lift my nose. Oh, sorry about that. Oops. Whenever I'm located in this area, yeah, I'm going to lift my nose up. And it, it, I think it's 250 locations that I can do that. That's I could be wrong, but it's something like that. But it's yeah, that way you don't, you know, you don't, don't got to lift your nose up every time you go into a driveway, you know. I don't know how often that's, that's going to be used, but I still think that's very impressive detail. It's it's the small details, and that's what makes a lot of these supercars, and I mean, even like Porsches or the quirks, right? The little things is yeah. what make these cars exciting. Exactly. And, uh, and that's they, what Corvette was lacking for so long. Absolutely. You got to remember, 100% agree. Chevrolet built iconic cars in the 50s and 60s and even into the early 70s. I think yep. the, the C2 Corvette, one of my all-time favorites, the 1963 Corvette Stingray. Beautiful car. Split window. Oh, side oh. exhaust? Do you remember the side exhaust? I do remember the side exhaust. That car, I think, is one of the most beautiful cars that Corvette or Chevrolet has ever made, and I don't think they'll ever be able to top that. But I will say the C2 was a very respectable car as the C1. The C3 lost its luster after several production years, and Chevrolet kind of got lazy and just relied on the cachet that the Corvette brand had built. Um, but then they revived it a little bit with the C4, Put out some respectable numbers when the C4 first came out in 1984. Um, and then again, they tried to keep it alive for way too long and release some, like my favorite is the 35th anniversary edition. You is that know. on the list? It's on the list. It's <laughs> on the list. Um, but yeah, I think the C8, I think they did an amazing job and I'm excited to see it on the road. I was, I'm excited. I'm following what Stradman's doing with his. I see uh, Amelia Hartford's already doing donuts in random parking lots with hers. But the specs on these things are very respectable. I mean, for 60,000 start? Hey, it's a GM car. It will depreciate. And I can tell you, honestly, within the next like two to three years, if prices come down to what I think they will, especially with this recession slash depression, I, I, I really think in like two to three years, you'll be able to get like the low end for 30, mid 30s. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I could see that. Yeah. It's not a limited production vehicle. It's mass produced. No. Yeah. Yeah, and you, so, yeah, yeah. You get a Corvette, you get a Corvette, you get, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing, everybody could get one. And, and exactly. that's one of the things that, you know, it could be a little bit intimidating going into a Porsche dealership or, yeah. you know, something along those lines to buy a nice car. You can just go to your neighborhood Chevrolet dealership and pick one up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, F, yeah, F, yeah, America. That's right. So, yeah, I'm not mad at it, man. It's, it's a beautiful yeah. car. Yeah, I, a good job. Speaking of beautiful cars, though, I wanted to segue into what happened with the Gambala Mirage oh, GT in New York City. Christ. It broke my heart. Yeah. Broke Ooh. my heart. I'm glad Brian's okay, Brian Chen, BC. For many of you guys who follow him on social media, he's got a well-known following, but he also has a history of reckless behavior and he's wrecked some beautiful cars. He's wrecked uh, some SVs. He's wrecked uh, a couple of the you know, copy machines. <laughs> the MP4-12 <laughs> when they first came out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He also wrecked uh, numerous other cars, but, you know, I, I don't know the details in your know, personal life of that guy. 
great yeah. taste in cars and, and that's what we're here for right for sure. um but, but yeah it, it's just a shame oh, what happened that hurt yeah. the world and I, I i know you know a little bit more than i do about the Kimbala. can you share just a little bit like what's the significance of that specific car yeah, uh, well, a, a little of, of of why I got into it myself. Um, back back uh, two thousand. Let's let's rewind Back two thousand six, two thousand seven. I, I lived in Malibu. Mm -hmm. I sat out there with a friend, and um, down the street was the tuner. And at that time, uh, Tech Art and uh, what's the other uh, company? Uh, Tech Art and one other. Anyways, mm -hmm. they were the guys that were doing. You know, they were modifying the supercars. A lot of people weren't doing that. A lot of companies weren't doing that. I think uh, Novatech, Novatech was just getting its beak wet around the area. Um, so I, I saw at that time a 997 Avalanche. You can look that up, but it's a modified version of the 997. It has wider flares, bigger wheels. I think it has somewhere around 800 horsepower. Very respectable numbers for back then. Yeah. So when I, when I used to see these cars, uh, you know, I want to do my research. Let me see what's going on here. And it wasn't that I saw one in person, but the very first time I saw a Gambala Mirage was online. And that was after looking up the brand. And it was a white one and it was in the Middle East. And this was back in 2007. So back then we had, what were the supercars of that day? Uh, the Gallardos, we had uh, Murcielagos. Uh, these are cars, these are cars that have like 600 horsepower, 500 horsepower in change. Um, and the, here comes this Gambala Mirage with a hood scoop, with a wild body kit. I mean, this thing looked like it came out of a GT3 race, but with no decals, you know? It, it just looked badass. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and I was intrigued since then. And, and it was a white one that I that I saw that just, I fell in love with it, man. And I would tell people, you know, some people will say, oh, what's the first car you'd buy if you're a millionaire? I'd say I'm gonna Mirage and people are like, what is that? Yeah. You know, and, and they say that because only, there's only, there was only, allegedly, 25 made in the world, allegedly. So you think I heard that there's, I, I think just like what Ferrari does, Ferrari says, well, we're going to release 500 coupes and we're going to do 300 convertibles, you yeah. know, and, and yeah. And so there's this whole thing with Ferrari where in Wiki, they don't I really tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they so on, if you get the VIN Wiki app, yeah. you can find out exactly, you can take a picture of the VIN number and it'll keep a log in the app. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's, uh, I think there's more than what they say. So. So anyways, I think Impala is about the same. And, and the only reason I say this is because the history of the company itself, uh, for, for some of you that don't know, um, it, that company was owned by this one guy who was involved with the mob. Um, long story wow. short, he was kidnapped and murdered. He was uh, for money laundering with some, uh, some, some uh, Czech guys from the Czech Republic. You can wow. look it up. Uh, yeah, he got kidnapped in South Africa and they never heard from him again. And Actually, 2010 is when this happened. And then in 2015, three other men were charged with the aid of the kidnapping of him. And unfortunately, yeah, he was murdered. Is this a movie? Um, trip this is over my, right? It, it sounds like it. <laughs> I mean, it just adds it just adds how cool and badass this is. Yeah. You know, that the brand. And, and let's harken back to what we're talking about here, that, you know, the car that was wrecked, which hurts even more right here. And... Uh, yeah, that's it's very unfortunate, man. Even seeing the footage, see, seeing the guy drive off while it's you know bent and crashed in, and, and I, I'm I'm sure a lot of people you know yeah. were sad to see. What did you myself. say? You told me that one of the first people to buy a Gimbala was. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It wasn't a it wasn't a Gimbala. The the whole thing about uh, the the CGT itself was that you've had to have had previous high-end Porsches, right? Okay. So at that time, you can, anybody could go in and buy a Murcielago, right? You know, mm -hmm. That was like the car at the time, even the Zondas, but um, you've had to have had previous, you know, high-end Porsches and uh, 2005 was the first year that they came out and I remember the press releases and Jerry Seinfeld and Jay Leno were some of the first to get their hands on it. Seinfeld. And that's because, I mean, as we all know, Jay Leno's garage, you know, and uh, oh, Jerry, Jerry yeah. Seinfeld is a big Porsche fan. He has a big collection um, that I like to see one day in person. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, that car when it came out. It just it, it had such a such a spotlight on it. It, it had you know so much drama and, and so much excitement that not a lot of other manufacturers had going at the time. Yeah. Well, 
certainly sad to see one less of that uh, on the road. But again, wish him well. And I hope somebody like a Tavares can. You think somebody like a Tavares can rebuild that? <laughs> what do you think? Try to get his hands on it. I mean, I, I would. Ambitious. I would love to see that. I'm sure everybody else can agree that's watching this can agree that. Tavares, um, you seeing this. <laughs> yeah, hey, Freddie. Uh, he's going to be in a salvage be, yard soon. He, he, he's going to have to sell a lot of his half projects that he has left, <laughs> yeah. that he hasn't finished. So, yeah, I would love to. But, I mean, it, I think, unless, like I said, if you have a 3D printer to print out the parts, yeah, but those parts aren't made anymore. So, yeah, yeah I'd love that, to see it. His challenge is finding parts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it'd be, it'd be down to that. So, I mean, you're talking carbon fiber components, yeah, you know, things like that, and then it is just very difficult. So, yeah, yeah. I, I want to see it. I want to see it uh, alive again. So maybe we'll see. Hopefully, ready. Bring, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bring, bring it back. Yeah, yeah, bring it back to life. <laughs> Revive it. All right. Yeah, well, yeah. I want to appreciate. I appreciate you, uh, Edwin, for joining us. Hey, my pleasure. My pleasure. Anytime. Oh, future. Oh, oh, hold on. I didn't. I didn't pay the light bill. There you go. Tuning me out uh, early. You're like, oh, I, I just. I forgot to pay the light bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of these, and I know you're going to be such a valued contributor in the future. I'm uh, looking forward to it. We had Zeno on yesterday, and we tried this. And unfortunately, it didn't work. We had some technical difficulties. That was entirely my fault. Um, I don't know how to hit record and record audio properly. Um, but anyway, I'm glad we were able to get you back on and, and discuss this. You're also going to be uh, releasing an article with a little bit more details about the Gimbala, correct? Yeah, look out for that on the website as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Edwin. Catch you Thanks next week. Take care. Right, take care, everybody.